Now I will be covering two major reaction mechanisms which can be applicable for a lot of compounds, especially those whose functional groups are attached to sp3 carbons. So let me start by recalling that an sp3 carbon is that which is attached to four different substituents via single bonds, which are all sigma bonds. But this time, instead of imagining that this is a normal carbon in an alkane wherein all the bonds are bonds to carbons or hydrogens, one of those bonds is replaced by a functional group L. I use the letter L for a reason, and we will get to that later. But L can be any one of the following functional groups. OH, X, SH, OR, or NH2. So I think it's best to first know what these are before we go further with the reaction mechanism. So if my compound has a functional group OH, of course that is an alcohol. If my functional group is X, so that's an alkyl halide, we are referring to an alkyl halide. If my functional group is an OR, then that's an ether, right? ROR. If my functional group is an SH, then obviously it's a thiol. And if my functional group is an NH2, that's the amino group, then I have an amine. We can conveniently uh, blanket them under the word substi substituted alkanes because literally all you needed to do to an alkane to make them any of the following classes of compounds is to replace a hydrogen with any of these. Okay? And now, what makes it convenient is that if you look at all of these functional groups, especially these atoms, you will notice something that's similar. I mean, imagine oxygen, halogens, sulfur, nitrogen. What's common in all of them? Hopefully you answered that they are all electronegative, right? Because if that is so, then regardless of what the functional group is here, it's electronegative, meaning that it likes to get electrons, giving this a partial negative charge. And therefore, this carbon right here, our alpha carbon, the carbon next to the functional group, is going to have a partial positive charge. And therefore, this partial positive charge indicates that this carbon at the middle is an electron-poor carbon, making this electrophilic, which is attractive to a nucleophile, and thus we can imagine the nucleophile giving its electrons to this carbon, which is partially positive. And of course, when a new bond goes here, an old bond must break. Now, remember, all these sigma bonds are strong, except for this. Remember the moment I have a partial negative or positive charge, that's gonna be weaker than bonds without charges. So, this is going to be the one which would go. And it's as if what we just did was take the L out and replace it with NU. And remember, I just said that the L, whatever that L is, will go out. That's why the meaning of the L here is actually leaving group. The fact that it left after the reaction makes us call that the leaving group. And just to make this complete, I'm saying that the nucleophile will go to our compound and replace the leaving group. Replace. Keyword, replace. So that's substitution, right? So the overall reaction mechanism is nucleophilic substitution. The nucleophile literally substituted for the leaving group. And the SN reaction is a powerful type of mechanism because it allows us to interconvert a lot of these substituted alkanes from one to another. Let's say I have an alcohol and I use the simple reagent HX. The X can easily substitute the OH and we will get an RX. Done. Or if I have PBR3, I can use this as a brominating agent to replace the OH here, giving us RBR or an alkyl bromide. Done. Or maybe I could use SOCl2. This one is often uh, referred to as thionyl chloride. To provide us a chlorine atom to replace the OH, we now replace OH with chlorine. Done. It's easy. All you need to do is to replace the leaving group with what we're supposed to replace it with. Also take note that there are specific rules for this. You can only use HX if your alcohol starting material is a... Is a uh, sorry, this is actually wrong. So let me correct myself in real time. So this is not supposed to be primary and this is not supposed to be tertiary. I kind of switched them. It's my bad. So you can only perform HX on tertiary alcohols, but if you have secondary or primary alcohols, HX will not work. 
So we need to use special reagents like this one or this one. Why, you ask? That's something that we will reserve for later discussion. Now, we have additional reactions here on the right, so let's notice them. If I have a starting material, which is an alkyl halide, I can use an NaOR. The name of this is a sodium, of course, for the Na. And the OR here is an alkoxide. Okay? So actually, that it's really supposed to have a positive charge here and a negative charge here, giving justice to the suffix "-ide". And the alkoxide will replace the X, giving us ROR. Oh, look, we made an ether. And that means that in order to make an ether, one of the most classic methods to do this, this is a very classic textbook reaction, all you need is an alkyl halide and a sodium alkoxide. And of course, there are some conditions that I need to clarify later on, but generally, this type of reaction wherein you use an alkyl halide and a sodium alkoxide, methoxide, ethoxide, propoxide, depending on the number of carbons, is the Williamson ether synthesis, regardless of what your R is here and here. It's still called Williamson ether synthesis. Or one more, if you have an alkyl halide, you can simply add ammonia, of course, in the presence of the proper conditions and catalysts if needed, and the NH3 will replace the X here, giving us our NH2. One of the H's from NH3 will merge with the X and will be eliminated as the leaving group HX if you just want to ask where the other H from NH3 went. And our final product is an amine. No special name for this one. Okay? So a lot of possibilities for interconversion. I didn't even have an example where I create a thiol, but do note that there are also SN reactions that allow us to make thiols. Now, other than SN, Specifically for alkyl halides and alcohols, they can undergo elimination reactions provided that we have a beta carbon. A beta carbon is, of course, the carbon next to an alpha carbon. An alpha carbon, remember, is a carbon directly attached to our functional group. So if I have a beta carbon, that is the only time that elimination is an option. So here I'm going to do a little shortcut in some parts, but first, Let's say I have here an alkyl halide and I have a base. I'm using a general formula because there are a lot of possible bases for this. The base has been studied to donate its electrons. Remember, in general chemistry, bases are electron donors, right? Lewis definition. And the base will donate its electrons. Well, studies have shown they target the beta hydrogen. And they kind of take it away, or the proper word for that is abstract that hydrogen. And this bond will be directed to the beta carbon. And then that will allow us to get rid of the X. And actually, these arrows are not always correct because there are two methods or two specific types of elimination, even three in some cases. But long story short, what you, we just want to see here is that the X will go out, the H will go out, and just to replace the things we have lost, the alpha and the beta carbon will have a double bond in place. And how do we call this? Well, in the first place, how, how did we call this reaction before, the backward one, wherein we start an alkene and I create an alkyl halide using the reagent HX. Please remember. The name is, uh, the name is hydrohalogenation. I almost wrote the opposite reaction. So now, if the reaction going to the left is hydrohalogenation where I add HX, how about this reaction to the right where I remove HX? Uh, this is what I was supposed to write a while ago. The opposite reaction to the right is called dehydrohalogenation, which makes sense, right? Usually, when we use the prefix de, it means to remove or to take away or to... to I lost a lot. I lost words for this. Or basically to get rid of something, right? So um, every time you have a de at the start, it means you're removing whatever is next to the prefix de. Okay? So by using a base, you can actually dehydrohalogenate an alkyl halide to an alkene. I mean, that's how you, you make that into a complete sentence. Similarly, for alcohols, you can also perform elimination provided you have a beta carbon, but this time, instead of a base, you use the common dehydrating agent, sulfuric acid. And just like for the chaos here above, 
there are a lot of arrows eh, we need to draw. But long story short, we're gonna get rid of this OOH, we're gonna re get rid of this beta hydrogen, and in place of that, the, a the alpha and the beta carbons will form a double bond. Done. So notice that every time I have an elimination reaction, our product is just an alkene. So that's a shortcut. And uh, before I forget, let's give the name for this. Well, just to give us a flashback, how did we call the reaction before? Wherein I had an alkene, I want to create an alcohol, I need to add water. How did we call this reaction? We called it hydration, right? Addition of water. So how do we call the opposite one? Clue is, you're just going to follow this. And so the name of the reaction going to the right is D high. And if you think about it, it's really common sense, at least to this in this point, that if you add water, it's hydrated, so it's hydration. This time, if you do the opposite, which is to, didn't we remove this H and this OH? Isn't that water if you combine that? Yeah, that's right. You literally removed water, so I think it makes sense. We call it dehydration. You removed water, okay? So, yeah, I mean... This is one of the few cases wherein it's really easy to interpret the meaning of the reaction. And the common dehydrating agent, again, is sulfuric acid. Now, one last thing to take note of in these types of reactions is there's a possibility in some cases that you have two or more beta carbons. And therefore, you have two or more possible alkenes as products. In that case, you need to follow what we call the Zaitsev's rule. This is pretty much Markovnikov's rule. But for elimination, remember that you are only limited to using the word Markovnikov's rule for addition reactions. If it was an elimination reaction like the ones you're seeing in this entire screen right now, the rule is Zaitsev's rule. But it's very similar. The major product for the Zaitsev's rule, the major alkene product, is the most stable one. Which eerily reminds you of how I stated the Markovnikov's rule. A few videos back. So for example, let's say I have two beta carbons here. The beta carbon at the left is a primary one and the one at the right is a secondary. And the fact that there are two beta carbons means that if I use a base to perform dehydrohalogenation, which is gonna remove the Cl, I'm gonna form a double bond in two possible carbons. Here and here. And in case you are given the question, which of these two is the major product? Oh, that's easy. This is primary. This one is a secondary beta carbon. And since secondary is more stable, right? Then therefore, this is going to be the major alkene. And this is going to be the one above is the minor alkene product. The same here. Let's say I have an alcohol and I'm going to use sulfuric acid to dehydrate this. So the water will be gone, and we're going to form a double bond between this alpha carbon and possibly the beta carbon above or below. So this is a possibility. Oh, this is going to be a possibility as well as this. But which of the two will predominate? Again, stability. What type of carbon is this beta carbon here? Secondary, right? How about this one below? Tertiary. Which is more stable, tertiary or secondary? Tertiary, right? And therefore, since the tertiary carbon is more stable than this alkene, wherein the more stable carbon holds the double bond, is once again the major product. And this one, once again, is the minor product. So this is it. Whether you believe it or not, these are the essentials of S and N D reactions. Because in the next discussion, I will be talking about something called molecularity. And therefore, there's not just Sn, there's Sn1 and Sn2, not just E, there's E1 and E2, which we will get into detail next.